All right, Honors Kim. We are gonna now talk about water equilibrium and start getting ready to do pH and pOH, okay? So let's think about distilled water. We think about distilled water as basically just H2O, but water can actually act as an acid as we've seen previously, and it can act as a base. So for example, if I have two, um, two molecules of water, could I actually take one of these hydrogens off of one of the molecules of water and bring it to this other molecule of water and make a hydronium ion? And then what's left of this first water molecule would be a hydroxide ion. So here, water is acting as both an acid, it's donating a proton or a hydrogen, and it's acting as a base because it's accepting that hydrogen or that proton. And we get the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion, which are the Arrhenius definitions, okay? Water, once again, this is not the way it is. It's not a one directional thing. Otherwise we would be drinking acid and base all the time. And when we drink water, we're not drinking acid and base. We're drinking a pretty neutral solution. So in reality, this is a double-sided arrow. This is an equilibrium arrow. This goes back and forth all the time, okay? So we have our conjugate acid here and we have our conjugate base here. Let's just fill that in. All right, so to simplify that, I would write it as H2O liquid going back and forth, double head reaction, to produce hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now, if I really wanted to be technical, yes, we would put aqueous in here, okay? So, now, when we have the dissociation constant of water, we will have this. The dissociation constant, or the ionization constant of water, will be the concentration, these square brackets right here, mean concentration, okay? And this concentration in molarity, moles over liters, okay? Hopefully this will let me start writing again. I'm sorry, this computer. I've even gone and saved everything so that it wouldn't have to think a whole lot. All right, sorry. Okay, hopefully this will let me go. So when we have square brackets like this, this means concentration. And once again. Okay, this is a way of saying concentration. And the concentration that we are using, concentration is molarity which is moles over liters, if you remember. So last unit, we used a lot of molality, moles over kilograms. This unit, we're gonna use a lot of molarity, moles over liters. Now, when I'm saying that I have my dissociation constant of water, it's equal to the hydrogen ion concentration, moles over liter, multiplied by my hydroxide ion concentration, moles over liters. Now, normally when we do a, an equilibrium constant, we do the products, or sorry, yeah, we do the products over the concentration of the reactants. Okay, and we will get into this a little bit more when we do our rate law and we do our reaction quotients here. But notice I don't show, if I did this, 
my dissociation constant or my ionization constant of water would be my concentration of my hydrogen ion multiplied by my hydroxide ion all over my concentration of water. But notice I'm not showing water here. Why not? There's a reason why not. We can only show concentration of things that we can actually measure a concentration of. Water is a pure liquid. So we can't show a concentration of it. It is liquid. It is 100% water. We also can't show a concentration of solids. So if anything in this constant ends up being a liquid or solid, we don't show it. It drops out and just becomes a one. Okay, so when we do that, our dissociation of con constant of water or our ionization constant of water will just be our concentration of hydrogen ions and our concentration of hydroxide ions. That's all it will be because those are the only ones that we can actually measure in a concentration. So our dissociation constant of water let me erase that because it's really just a repeat of what's up there, is going to be, hmm. So for every hydrogen that I get, I'm going to also make a hydroxide. So wouldn't they be equal in pure water? Yeah. So our concentration of hydrogen ions in pure water is 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. That also means our concentration of hydroxide is also going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. Very, very small. That means in one liter of water, I have 0 0.12345. I have that many moles of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. That's not very many, is it? So it's very small. So since our product, our ionization constant of water is the product of hydrogen and our product of our hydroxide, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative seven, essentially squared, what is seven squared? Remember when we have exponents in parentheses, we multiply them. So that means our, dis our ionization constant of water is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, okay? It's an extremely small number, which we means that we have very, very few ions in water. So few ions that when we did our um, when we did our electrolyte demo last time, a couple times ago, when we had pure water, distilled water, was it able to conduct electricity? Not really, because we did not have enough ions in that distilled water to actually carry the electron current from one electrode to the other when we did our conductivity demo. So the ion product of water, Kw, is the Hydrogen represents the concentration of the hydrogen ion, remember, in moles per liter. So anytime we have that square bracket, it equals molarity, moles per liter. And hydrogen hydroxide square bracket represents the concentration of the hydroxide ion in moles per liter. Okay? In dilute aqueous solutions, the product of the concentrations of hydrogen ion and hydroxide always equals Kw, which is... 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, okay? So in any water solution then, the hydrogen ion multiplied by the hydroxide ion concentration will equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So if I know the hydrogen ion concentration, I can find the hydroxide ion concentration or vice versa. So let's do a couple of practice, okay? Calculate the hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentration using the dissociation or the ionization constant of water at 298 Kelvin, okay? 
the ion concentration in a cup of coffee is 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. What is the hydroxide ion concentration? Now, we're going to start throwing in pH here too. Okay, so Kw is equal to hydrogen and hydroxide. We know the hydrogen. We want to know hydroxide. So let's isolate hydroxide. So the Kw divided by the hydrogen ion concentration is the hydroxide ion concentration. So I'm just going to plug in our numbers. Our Kw, or ionization constant of water, is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, right? Ugh, I did not write that very well. 14. And our concentration of water is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5. So if we can plug this into our calculators, or since this is 1, we can actually just subtract the, um, the exponents. So negative 14 minus a negative 5. So 14 plus 5 is a negative 9. So my hydroxide ion concentration would be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 9, okay? Now, if my hydrogen ion concentration is bigger than my hydroxide ion concentration, what's bigger? 10 to the negative 5 or 10 to the negative 9? Hopefully you said 10 to the negative 5. So because that is bigger, this is acidic. If my hydrogen ion concentration is larger than my hydroxide, it's acidic. If my hydroxide is larger than my hydrogen, it's basic. Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what is the hydroxide ion concentration of a solution where the hydrogen is 3.8 times 10 to the negative fifth? We're gonna set this up the exact same way. We wanna know the hydroxide ion concentration. So we're gonna put our our ionization constant of water, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And we are going to divide it. I can't, for the life of me, write 14 in a legibly, in a legible way. We are going to divide it by our hydrogen ion concentration, which is 3.68 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay? Use your trusty handy dandy calculator. Now, notice these are exponents. So you're going to use that DE button that we haven't used for a long time. So here we go. 1 EE negative 14 divided by 3.68 second EE negative 5 and we get 2.717. Let's see we only really have this is a definition so this really goes on forever. So we have three sig figs here. So 2.72 times 10 to the negative 10 is going to be our concentration of the hydroxide ion. Okay? So once again, our acid or our hydrogen ion concentration is larger than our hydroxide. So this is going to be acidic. Okay, what is the hydrogen and the hydroxide concentration of a solution of a weak base? Okay, we are going to do this dissociation constant for a while, so we're going to hold off on this. So I think we're just going to leave it there. We're going to start talking about pHs and pOHs next time. Have a great day. Thanks. We'll see you later. Bye.